Look, let's go it on over to page 12. And let's see about his understanding. Uh, number, uh, number two up at the top, his understanding. And let's go back to Proverbs uh, chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, begin about uh, verse, uh, li, 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 verse 4. Oh, I like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Verse 3. Proverbs 3, 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. Now, here, write, write, my tongue as, as the pen of a ready writer. Speaking words. Speaking what? Mercy. Mercy is a spirit. Truth. Truth is a spirit. Forsake thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. How do I do that? How do I put them around my head? Write them on the tables of thine heart with my words. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Your own understanding. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't think that what you think that you think that you think is there. Lean unto God. Seek unto God. Seek after God's understanding. God's understanding. Go to Proverbs chapter 5. It's right there in your manual. Look, it says, My son, attend unto my wisdom. My wisdom. And how and bow thine ear to my understanding. If it belongs to God, if it is his possession, then it's a living being. Nothing has a relationship except it be alive. A living kingdom of a living God. Now let's go over to Psalms one forty seven. Psalms 147 and let's uh, let's begin with verse two. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Infinite. A living being with eternal Life. The only thing that is infinite is that which goes beyond time. The universe outside here that we dwell in, it's not an infinite universe. It has a limitation. But God's understanding has eternal life. It is a spirit that is, and we can conceive it as being infinite because how could you ever know it all? We don't have to have all understanding we have to have god's understanding and then that spirit of understanding has understanding concerning everything 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 let's go to another scripture in jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 15 it's right in your book he hath made the earth by his power he hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out, established, stretched out, framed, stretched out the heaven by his understanding. The spirit of understanding frames, structures the word of God into all of its little places. It's, it's glorious, wonderful. Let's go back to Proverbs. 3.19 says, By his understanding he has established the heavens. By his understanding he has established his heavens. Proverbs 16.22. Let's start at verse 20. Proverbs 16.20. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. Now, what does that mean? That means a person who has this relationship with wisdom, and wisdom is guiding them to do something. Whoso trusts in the Lord, happy is he. 21. The wise in heart, what does that mean? It means that heart, you, that person, has this relationship. Wisdom is serving this Son of God. Shall be called prudent. 
and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. Verse 22, understanding is a well of life, a spring of life, a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fools is folly. Why would understanding be a, 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 a well of life or a fountain of life? Well, it's because of this. Is that when we have understanding, it continually shows us the detailed structures and the situations of how to bring to pass the Word of God, how to create, how to cause the problems to pass away. Understanding gives us the ability to continue to go on and on and on, developing the wisdom that is ministering to us and it says that the progressive progress progress the progressive activity of the growing of the seed of the word of god that progression is a tree of life understanding is a wellspring a spring of life unto us constantly bringing us amazing amazing life life in the kingdom of god Let's go to Daniel, chapter 21. Excuse me, chapter 2. Daniel 2, verse 21. Here's talking about, about God. Okay. Let's go to verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might. There's one of the seven spirits. See, these guys knew about this stuff in the Old Testament. Are His. But they didn't have a living relationship with it because they were dead spiritually. Verse 21, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise. In other words, the, uh, you get a relationship with wisdom and you start getting more and more and more. Uh, what was the principle that Jesus said? Unto him that hath even, even uh, he shall be given more. Yes, unto him that hath and is faithful with it, more shall be given unto him. But to him that hath not, even what he thinks he has shall be taken away. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge, the spirit of knowledge to them that have a knowledgeable, a knowing relation, a relationship with understanding. Look, and knowledge. Didn't we, understand, didn't we see that if we follow after understanding, that we seek her as silver, that she will get un, give to us? A revelation of the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and we shall find the knowledge of God, the spirit of knowledge. He giveth wisdom and unto the wise, and he gives the spirit of knowledge to them that have a relationship with understanding. Let's go to Proverbs uh, chapter 15. And in verse, verse 14 it says, The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. But the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. Now, when I have this relationship with understanding, it causes me to hunger and to thirst after knowledge. After the knowledge of God. After the spirit of knowledge. See, one spirit helps me come into relationship with another spirit. It comes into relationship with another spirit. All of them want to come into relationship with me because uh, they want to serve me as the son of God. They want to serve you as the son of God. Now let's go into the New Testament in the book of 1 John chapter 5. Now I want to remind you, as you're getting revelations and you're getting thoughts and you're beginning to see how all this is working together, the mind of the Spirit within you being increased and enlarged to be able to comprehend this, that you need to take down notes on the opposite side of the page in your workbook. Remember to do that. Now let's go to 1 John chapter 5. And here in verse 20, look carefully. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life to know him <laughs> is eternal life but then it says we have been given an understanding he that findeth me findeth life understanding said in the book of proverbs 
And as the spirit of understanding is manifesting itself unto me, it constantly gives me more and more and more and more understanding and, and, and more enlightenment of the life and the person and the being that Jesus Christ is. That I am in him and that he is God. Yes. <laughs> wow, it's almost too much, but it's good. Let's go over to Colossians chapter 9. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, Also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Anything that is a spiritual, anything that is a spirit, is a living being. That you might work, walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. He is praying that we might be filled with knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Walk worthy of the Lord. Pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing, continuously growing and increasing in the knowledge of God. Let's go down to, uh, to chapter 2. Chapter 2 in Colossians. And here Paul is praying a prayer. I would, verse 1, for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, as for many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Two, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father, and of Christ. Do you see what a great mystery this living kingdom has been? But it's now being revealed unto us by the Spirit of God. What a great mystery it has been.